dear students this is our third lecture in the main memory so over the past two lectures we have got a glimpse of how the dram cells are actually organized into columns rows banks ranks dims and channels and we also looked at the memory controller and we we were trying to understand the various jobs or what all different components the memory controller has we looked at the address mapping wherein the physical address is divided into the column row bank rank dim and channel numbers and then the address the request is enqueued either in the read queue or write queue at this juncture there can be some request uh, request scheduling that can be done by the memory controller based on some priorities following that we looked at various dram timings that we need to obey to write or read the data from the dram all these timings need to be closely monitored and adhered to and the memory controller does that job following that we looked at what's called the page table which basically gives the information about what all rows are open in the banks of the dram accordingly the memory controller will decide to insert the appropriate dram commands if it's a page hit it inserts a cache into the command queue if it's a page empty it inserts an act followed by a cache and if it's a page miss then we need to insert a pre followed by an act and then a cache now let's move on a quick recap of the working of refresh process in the dram bank the memory controller which is on chip occasionally sends a refresh command to the dram device the refresh controller which is on the dram device takes over the operation of this device and in within the dram device it issues back to back activates wherein it a particular row is selected and read into the row buffer and followed by that followed by a precharge where the data is written back to the original position another row activate and a precharge so the refresh controller will issue a sequence of activate and precharges for the rows in the banks or the sub banks of this dram device now the question is will the refresh controller refresh all the rows in a single go or does it have any other way of handling it so with that we will look at the refresh timings the refresh related parameters are something like this we need to refresh every dram cell in our main memory for every 64 milliseconds now if the ambient temperature is greater than 85 degrees then the refresh rate is doubled it means that we need to send a refresh or we need to refresh the dram cell for every 32 milliseconds now the major downside of refresh operation is that particular rank usually refresh happens at rank level it means that when we uh, when the memory controller sends a refresh all the banks in that rank will undergo refresh operation at the uh, the physical level it means that all the dram devices of that rank take this refresh command and internal refresh controller of all these devices comes into picture now when the refresh controller is busy refreshing the rows 
it is unavailable to the memory controller for the regular reads and writes. It means that during the refresh operation of the DRAM, you can assume that there is no main memory available to, available to us. So whatever the cache misses are there, they will keep waiting at the memory controller for the service. So refresh operation is in a way a performance blocker because if any of these reads are actually stalling our pipeline, now because of refresh, the number of stalls will increase. Now, touching upon the previous question, will the refresh controller refresh all the rows in a single go? Earlier that was the case, but in the modern day sub banks, there are huge number of rows in each in each of them. For example, if we consider a 16 gigabit X4 DDR4 DRAM device, it has 2 power 18 rows. Now for each of these rows, if you want to send an activate and recharge internally, it takes a lot of time. So a provision has been given, which is called distributed refresh, wherein we divide these 2 power 18 rows into small groups and when the memory controller sends a refresh command to the rank, one of these groups will be refreshed at a time. Now let's try to understand it a little further. The refresh command needs to be sent by the memory controller for every TREFI interval. TREFI expands to refresh interval. It is the time between two refresh commands. Upon re receiving the refresh command, each sub bank refreshes the predefined number of rows and the time to refresh this set of rows is TRFC. TRFC is refresh cycle time. Simply put, it is the time taken by one refresh command that is sent by the memory controller. If you look at the timeline, once a refresh command is sent to the device, it spends certain amount of time refreshing it. That is marked as the red box here. And we need to send a refresh command for every 64 milliseconds. So this was the case when the capacity of the DRAMs were low and the number of rows in the sub banks were very few. But like I already mentioned, in distributed refresh, the, the rows are divided into certain groups. The number of groups is fixed, which is 8K, that is 8192 groups. Now, it means that the 2 power 18 rows, in the example uh, sub bank we saw, it will be divided by 8192, that would come to, 2 power 5 rows in each. It means 32 rows will form one group. Once we send a refresh command, the first refresh command will refresh 32 of those rows. The next refresh command send, uh, refreshes the second 32 rows, third, fourth, so on and so forth. This way, in a particular 64 millisecond window, the memory controller now sends 8K refresh commands. Each refresh command will refresh the 32 rows. If we zoom into one particular interval, that is our TREFI, it is 7.8 microseconds. How did we get it? It is basically 64 milliseconds on top of 8192. For every 7.8 microseconds, the memory controller sends a refresh command and the device spends TRFC time refreshing. Now, if we want to understand how the time in terms of uh, the percentage of time in, term, in terms of some numbers, as the 
device capacity increases from 1 gigabit to 32 gigabit, the amount of time we spend in refresh is increasing. So for example, for 32 gigabit device, the main memory is unavailable to us for almost 10% of the time. And this is during the normal temperature, which is below 85 degrees. Now, if we, cons if we consider per minute, we are sending, we in the sense, the memory controller is sending 16 refresh commands to the device. If we consider extended temperatures, which is 85 to 95 degrees centigrade, we need to refresh at twice the rate. Accordingly, the time we spend in the refresh is increasing. For example, for the same 32 gigabit device, we spend almost 20% of the time in refresh at high temperatures. It means for, uh, for every 100 seconds, 20 seconds, the main memory is not available to the core because it is busy in refresh. So in uh, uh, the normal temperature, we send 16 refreshes per minute. And in extended temperature, we double that number. So refresh, handling the refresh has been quite an issue because it directly impacts performance. So there were some features that were provided by the DRAM manufacturers. One of them is postponing the refresh commands. It means we can send the refresh commands for every TREFI or we can at max wait for 9 TREFI intervals between two refresh commands. Now, how would this help? If in this particular, at this particular time, if we see that the core is sending a lot of requests to the memory, instead of delaying those requests, we will delay the refreshes and by nine intervals and in the 10th interval, we'll send all the pending refreshes. We have delayed nine, so all the nine will be here. And later on, we can uh, resume our normal operation of sending one refresh command for every refresh interval. This is called postponing refresh commands. Another feature is quite opposite, wherein instead of the apart from the regular non, uh, one refresh command per TREFI, we can send nine refresh commands prior and after that for the next 90 refi intervals we need not refresh. But the key constraint is in a 64 millisecond window we need to send 8k refresh commands. So there is some provision provision of how uh, if, uh, if possible we can on demand delay or prepone the refresh commands. But we need to still send 8k refresh commands in 64 milliseconds. Apart from this, there are a few other features which are temperature control refresh mode, self refresh, auto refresh, auto self refresh modes in the DRAM devices, which the memory controller can use. With all this, the memory controller tries to manage the refresh, op refresh operations. We can term that as refresh management because the refresh makes a rank unavailable for TRFC time. We need to find an opportune time to send the refresh commands. Basically, the opportune time can be uh, defined as some possible window where the memory main memory utilization from the core is low. It means there are very few requests. So we can do the refresh operations during that time so that the overall performance might not get affected significantly. So over, uh, over the past decade or so, there were many refresh management techniques that have been proposed by both in industry experts and academia. This is uh, a topic for an advanced architecture course. Apart from the refresh management, 
the DRAM also has various power modes. Let's try to understand them. In general, it was observed that DRAM based main memory that we used that we use in our regular laptops, mobiles and servers or enterprise systems. It contributes to 25 to 40 40 percent of overall power consumption of the system. So which is huge. So accordingly to reduce the power consumption of DRAM there were some power modes that were proposed and implemented in the hardware. So here we have a state diagram. I'll explain it uh, step by step. So in the normal DRAM, uh, normal operation a bank will be in active standby mode and in active standby mode it consumes 45 milliamperes of current it requires that and then if all the banks of this rank are recharged so it so uh, my bad the state diagram is per rank so if any of the bank is in active state it means that some row is open in one or more banks we say that the rank is in active standby state and if all the banks are in precharge state it means that no row is open we call that precharge standby and extending that we have a self refresh mode wherein the DRAM has the data but the core will not be able to access it. So the best example for self refresh is when we put it in sleep mode. The data is still there in the DRAM but it will not be used by the core because the core itself has been shut down. But we want the boot up to be fast so we don't move the data from the main memory to the secondary memory and to maintain the data we need to do the refresh only refresh internally will happen in self refresh mode and the data is not visible to the core or accessible to the core now when the dram is in active state there are possible other state transitions which can happen based on the utilization of dram there are some power down modes active power down precharge power down recharge power down two variants one is the fast variant other is slow what that's fast and slow means if we put the rank in a precharge power down slow mode it means to bring it back to the regular state the precharge state it takes longer time in the same way we can have a precharge power down mode fast wherein we can bring back the DRAM from this mode to the regular mode a little bit fast so if you see in the self refresh mode the current needed is just 6 milliamperes whereas in complete active standby mode we need 45 milliamperes and in power down fast mode it is 35 power down slow mode it is 12, amp 12 milliamperes so now the memory controller being aware of these power down modes various power down modes if it wants to save some power it needs to observe how the memory utilization is and accordingly move the rank into one of these states so all the transitions across these states are the commands given to the rank from the memory controller here it is pdx this is pde and here uh, it is pde DLL off here DLL on so on so forth in the regular usage the DRAM it will always be in either of these two states if there is some low utilization it will be in one of these three states and if there is no utilization it would be put in self refresh mode so all these activities of refresh management and power mode management will be handled by the maintenance block in the memory controller. So apart from the refresh and power modes in the maintenance as part of maintenance the memory controller also does some something called as scrubbing which will clean the data also it does error detection and correction. 
so for as part of maintenance the memory controller monitors all the memory activity that is happening and accordingly takes a call when to send a refresh when to put it in the low power mode or rather power down mode or which power down mode it has to put in and if there is any error in the data being transmitted from the DRAM to the chip it needs to identify that and possibly correct it. Now the last task of the memory controller is DRAM command scheduling. Now if you look at uh, this picture we have various DRAM commands enqueued in each of these command queues. So here we have the scheduler which needs to pick one command every cycle and send it to the DRAM. So we can pick the command based on the page status of the request or it can be based on age. It means that the oldest request will be given priority. How do we know that it's the oldest, oldest request? There will be a notion of timestamp. It can be relative or it can be based on the criticality of the request. We have seen such a thing at the request scheduling also. The processor can send more information saying that some particular request or a set of requests are very critical to it so that the memory controller can speed up their service or the priority can be based on the type of request also. The typical priority would be read over writes over another specialized request called prefetch. I haven't touched on prefetching at the caches so you can ignore it for now. And any other command scheduling algorithm that can improve the overall performance can be deployed here. Again, over the past 10 plus years or uh, to be exact from 2005 onwards, wherein we moved from single core to multi core era. From then on, the main memory has been under tremendous pressure and the memory architects and the system architects were coming up with various techniques to improve performance. So command scheduling is one of the target areas. And typically the algorithm, scheduling algorithm is de decided by an extensive analysis of the workloads of the target application. If you want to deploy our DRAM in let's say server environment, the server workloads will be analyzed. If you want to deploy our main memory in the laptop or a desktop, the workloads will be different. If it's in mobile, if it's on mobile, again the mobile workloads are different. So accordingly, the scheduling algorithm will be chosen. So that is the last job of the memory controller. With that, we have completed the overall picture of how the DRAM is organized physically and what all different aspects the memory controller needs to do to handle a request from the caches. Over the years, there have been many DRAM standards that have been productized and Joint Electron Device Engineering Council, short, in short JDEC, is a consortium of both industry and academia who take call on these standards. Now for different needs, different standards of DRAM are available. For an bandwidth optimized setup or for a latency optimized setup or a power optimized setup or the form factor can be a de uh, decision factor or we would need a DRAM which is balanced in all of, all of them. So for bandwidth optimized implementations, we have what's called graphics DDR, GDDR. For latency optimized, we have RDDDR or RLDDR, reduced latency DDR. For power optimized, we have LPDDR. For form factor optimized, we have devices with high device width 
this would be critical for our mobile applications and the balanced version of all these is the regular DDR which, which we use in our desktops and servers so on. Now if you um, can check any mobile or any computing system which has which is built to be mobile for example your tablet or a highly optimized uh, system like a Microsoft Surface Pro or something like that it would come with a low power DDR because there the power consumption is mainly uh, is a main con constraint because they are battery driven so accordingly based on the target deployment we pick that DDR and use it if we look at the balanced version which is the regular DDR there were there are many ge generations over the past three or four decades it is driven again by technology scaling that is Moore's law so the first generation was SDRAM S stand for synchronous DRAM before that the DRAM was asynchronous after that they have deployed a clock and all the all the later deployments of DRAM are synchronous DRAMs only so the first generation was SDRAM and the speed was somewhere between 100 to 166 megahertz only and it was operating at 3.3 volt following that we have the first DDR if you look at the frequency it has improved slightly and the operating voltage decreased a little then we have the second generation of DDR the frequency almost doubled with DDR operating voltage reduced then we have the third generation the frequency improved a little and the operating voltage voltage dropped a little what we are currently using widely is DDR4 and the typical memory frequencies are somewhere between 1 to 2 gigahertz and the operating voltage is 1.2 volts DDR4 which can go up to 3.2 gigahertz and operate at 1 volt is currently under development we would see these DDR5 based DIMMs sometime in 2023 onwards now if we look at the various DRAM parameters which are the physical chip uh, capacity the cost access time of a row and a column and average column access time to an existing row which is the access time of which is basically TCAS and this is TRCD if you look at from uh, over the years from 1980 to 2012 the access latency dropped from the TRCD dropped from 50 nanoseconds to 35 nanoseconds and TCAS dropped from 150 nanoseconds to 0.8 nanoseconds and the capacity slowly increased from mere meager 64 kilo bit to 4 gigabit now and with technology scaling we have an additional advantage of cost drop so it has become quite cheaper now but when compared to the scaling of the processors the scaling of DRAM was not so encouraging and that's the reason we have the memory wall where both the latency and bandwidth of the DRAM are bottlenecks for overall system performance so with that I conclude the main memory part